Hello, everybody. And uh, we, we are listening and watching uh, Dream Big with Jana, inspiring you to reignite, refire, and refuel your life. And today's guest is an amazing person, a very super professional in what he is doing. He has great passion for that. That's Ken Thors. And uh, I mean, Kors, sorry. See, Ken Kors. I mispronounced your name. I mean, your last name. So, Ken Kors. Um, so, really happy to have you <laughs> on the show. And um, the topic for today, we're going to be jumping right into the marketing. Five questions that you must ask before right. you market. That's the topic for today's show. But before we dive in, I just wanted to give a little bit of the background in your official bio so that people get to know you a little more a, a little better do you want to take a moment and share it or share it on your on your page on facebook if you guys are watching and if you i you did in, you did you already did yes if somebody if somebody wants to share it with the friends who might benefit from this please go ahead and do it uh ken if you can quickly explain how to do that uh it would be awesome there is sure a there's just a little share button. So if you're seeing this on my profile or they're seeing it on the Hummingbird Academy page, all you got to do is click share and just click share right now. And if you want to add a person or tag people in it, when you click the share button, just make sure to put their names in there. So at and then their names. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> so um, it was just a little moment of sharing. And now let me share with you the official bio um, um, <laughs> of Ken Kors. So Ken Kors is known nationally for his high energy, experiential and interactive presentations that give your audience momentum in their businesses now. Ken is the founder of Explore Momentum and On Course Marketing. He's been featured in front of audiences at more than 150 events, 150 events in the United States, Canada, Australia, and the UK. He's developed and consulted on 10 plus multi million dollar program launches. And he shared the stages with speaking legends uh, such as Les Brown, um, Kevin Harrington, Nancy Matthews, and many more. So he's really, really accomplished. He knows what he's doing. And I, having, um, you know, having been blessed to get to know <laughs> Ken personally, and he's amazing. My, for, my personal flavor is that you always come from a place of serving you are very on target always to the point and really <laughs> come with the idea to help like how can i help you and it right. comes from the heart which is a gift in itself so thank you so thank much you. for being well on I, the show. I i feel honored to know you too and to be uh, both of us as a lot of people who have seen us at live events know is we both love to sing and we're both yeah. drawn in by music and actually what a lot of people don't know and i i don't get a chance to talk about this often is that the whole reason I ever even started getting into technology, getting into marketing, like going into the space when I was in my teen years was because of music. I was, I had a music project at the time that I was recording. And as I started putting my demos together and on a four track recorder back in the day, I wanted to find a way to put those demos online. So the first websites I ever created, which you will never find online anywhere, <laughs> Why have not? my original recordings from years and years ago, right after I graduated high school, which is when I actually started learning how to do this. And that was the start of what got me into the digital space and online marketing. <laughs> But let me, let me tell you, the passion that you share for music, because I've seen you sing on stage, we shared, <laughs> uh, now I can say I shared stage with Ken Kors. Uh, we were singing on the same stage, and it was, it was really, it's fun, because, and thank you for mentioning that, because you bring <laughs> as much energy into your music as, as the energy that you bring into everything you do in marketing. Yeah. So, and I think I don't know if it's related, but we'll let's dive right into that. So oh, I think it is. that was the okay. So, what is like my the audience that is watching us? Uh, they are, as you know, probably there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there 
who are really terrified and scared of the word marketing because they right. think it's so complicated and it overwhelms that well blah, 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 overwhelms them <laughs> before they even start see i right. can't even pronounce that word well <laughs> keep in mind that it's six o'clock my time and you're on the east coast it's nine, nine so guys bear with us <laughs> we're, still gonna, we're still gonna deliver on the promise so five <laughs> questions what would you say to these people can uh who are terrified of marketing like what makes you a good marketer do you need to be a professional do you need to hire someone right away no so what are these Okay. Well, and, and so let me, let me start by saying a couple of things because there's, there's two big things that marketing gets really entangled with that you, you kind of want to try to look at it a different way. So first of all, the terrifying thing for most people is the technology side of it. And, and there are people who are like me who love technology and who want to embrace it and who want to learn the new strategy. And marketing is so much more than just digital marketing or online marketing or Facebook ads or social media or your website or any of that. Those are all things that are helpful to have. But in this day and age, they're not even things that you necessarily need to do anymore. So that's one of the things for those of you who, who know that doing the technical side isn't going to be where you start or isn't going to be where you go. The good news is, is that you don't have to start there. And then the second thing is, is that a lot of people, when it comes to talking about themselves or being in relationships with other people, don't like the idea of bragging or you've been brought up. Like most of us are brought up with the belief, like don't be the tall poppy. Don't brag about yourself. Don't talk about these things. You know, you get cut down or people make fun of you for doing that. When it's in your business, it is the lifeblood of your business to be able to meet new people, to be able to talk about yourself and what you do, to be able to get into relationships and conversation with people. So it doesn't matter if you're sitting in front of someone or if you're at a networking event or if you're building a website or you're building a full funnel, it always comes down to focusing on meeting new people. And so for those of you who want to serve people, which I imagine knowing your audience, most people that are going to be watching this video or watching the replay are in business because they want to serve other people. They have a big message that they know they need to deliver. I know that's true for you. Yeah. Or they have a community of marketing isn't the obstacle. Marketing is, the, that's the way a lot of people see it. It's not the obstacle. It's not just about technology. Marketing is actually the thing that's going to help you get where you want to go. And so the more that you can step back and you can say, this is just growing myself, it's growing my community, it's meeting new people, it's getting into relationships and conversations the way that you need to, that kind of takes away a lot of the mystique. Everything else, when it comes down to how you're going to do marketing, which I'm going to talk a little bit about that tonight, mm -hmm. when it comes down to the how, those are just tactics that serve your ability and your desire to meet people. So don't get lost in the idea that marketing is all tactical at the end of the day. Although you want to use tactics and you want to use the, the most proven tactics and the best tactics you can find, at the end of the day, it's just about getting to know people, getting to, to take your message out, getting to do the thing that you went into business to do. And so marketing in many ways can be just as satisfying when you really start doing it consistently as actually doing the work that you're trying to do or doing the work that you're trying to sell because it's just the introduction. It's the same way that you would meet somebody anywhere else. Does that make sense? It does make sense. It does make, make a lot of sense. And for, for you guys who are watching and listening, it's, um, well, Ken is basically talking about the mind shift, uh, mindset shift. See, I can't even... <laughs> Stay on track. It's it's really how you shift your thinking around marketing. And he just right. explained that really, really beautiful. So thank you so much. <laughs> so what's the first step, Ken? What's the first step like to somebody who is completely new to the idea? Because for a lot of people, they think it's marketing is selling. It's like you, right. you immediately have to sell something. So right. what's the distinction? Okay, so the distinction, the distinction for those of you who don't know what it is, is think of it as two parts of a conversation. Marketing is the beginning of a conversation and sales is the, the end of the conversation. It's the destination. It's the request. It's the, you know, I've gotten to know you and now I'm ready to do business with you. That's actually part of why when we were talking about putting this together tonight, 
that I wanted to talk about these five questions that I give people. And the reason is, is because these are the same five questions that literally hang on my wall in my office. They're what I look at whenever I think of campaigns. And I've been doing this for many, many years in many different industries. But these same simple questions are always the thing that I come back to. So the first step is really to go, all right, take notes and take these five questions and hang them on your desk, hang them on your office wall, put them where you can see them. And they're not about the technology. They're not about strategy. They're really simple, plain language questions that you can say, am I ready to market? Am I ready to start having conversations with people? And if you're not, all you have to do is answer these questions and you will be. So I want to give those questions really quickly. And I'm going to explain a little bit about each of them. So here's the first question. So the first question you all have to ask, and I imagine this is the one for most of you that you pretty much know the answer immediately, is what problem do you solve? And I know for those of you who've been in business a while and you've heard a lot of marketers, they really constantly try to get you back to the problem over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. There are many, many people walking around the world that have the problem that you solve. There are many, many people who need the message that you have, who need your teaching, who need your products, who need your services. You just have to be able to communicate to them when they haven't solved that problem yet. And as entrepreneurs, I think the thing that gets most confusing, especially since you created your solution, you're the person that came up with it. You're the person that lived your story, lived your experience. You know how all of this works out. And so you're thinking about what problem you solve from the after perspective. You're saying, well, I know how to solve that problem. That's why you're going to work with me. But keep in mind what it was like before you had solved that problem. Keep in mind what it was like when you were struggling or at the beginning of the story that you tell when you're talking to somebody and go back to that state and remember that the people that you're speaking with or the people that you're meeting online, offline, wherever, are at the beginning of this story. They're at the beginning of this stage. They feel some of, if not more than what you were feeling when you were going through the process of creating the solution or working with people on it. So you have to be able to communicate as clearly as possible and as simply as possible what problem you solve. So that's the first question. What problem do you solve? Again, mm -hmm. simple, plain language. And if you can get it down to one sentence, very simply of, you know, I am the solution for this, that's fine. And one can other note. Us, uh, yeah. Ken, sorry for interruption. Yeah, uh, no can problem. you give a specific, uh, specific example from your experience? Sure. So I'll give you me and then we, we can work on any number of problems. So for me, obviously, the problem that I have is, is exactly the problem we're talking about tonight. The problem I solve is I help you find new customers. I help you meet new people. I help you get in front of the right people for your business. And I help you do it in a way that you can do it again and again and again. Uh -huh. Most people, if I ask them what's going on in their business, it's one of two things. They don't have enough money or they don't have enough customers. And the customers really are still a money issue. But those uh -huh. are the two things most people will say. Now, that said, and one of the important things that I'm going to do a couple of other examples is a lot of people think that they, they have to solve every problem or that they have to solve uh -huh. a huge problem. But some of the biggest products in the world solve very simple problems like you can use the example of like left-handed scissors like that's a that's a problem to left-handed people before those things existed but that's mm -hmm. not a problem that it's causing people discomfort and it's no good and especially for kids who have to work with scissors all the time it's not mm -hmm. good it's not good but keep in mind that not every problem that that is solved out there and every problem that needs to be solved in business is some excruciating severe life changing transformational problem and in fact some businesses solve very simple problems like you know shoelace ties and certain things like that it doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily have to be a huge problem you just have to be able to say very simply what's the problem that you solve What's the pain that somebody's walking around with going, man, I wish I had those left-handed scissors. Man, I wish I had, you know, a certain color of shoelace. Man, I wish that I could talk mm -hmm. to other people. I wish I could lose 10 pounds. I wish I could grow my business. Does that and make sense? It does make sense. And, and the question that follows will be, um, I'm sure a lot of people will ask that. Um, mm -hmm. If we have, if they, are sell, if they are solving more than one problem, uh, uh -huh. then the marketing is going to be different for each problem. That's what you're saying? 
Typically, yes, because you're going to be talking to different people who are starting at different stages because some problems are more important to some people than others. So maybe right in, and that's why even when I was talking about me, I made the distinction of some people will tell me they want more customers and some people will tell me they want more money. Those are two different mm -hmm. conversations because mm -hmm. the person that Absolutely. wants customers is looking for a marketing strategy. They're looking for how they're gonna start putting themselves out there. They might have programs or products or things that they do. The person that wants money is focused more on the end game. They're focused more on the business model. They're focused more on sales. So those are two very different conversations with two different people who have different perspectives. And I know that a lot of you out there, especially those of you that are brand new to business or you're just starting out, want to solve every problem. And I can tell you as someone that's been in business a very long time and worked with very successful people, do your best when you're meeting people to solve one problem. The one biggest problem that they have typically when you meet them or when you sit down, the one thing that you find yourself hearing on the phone over and over or in person when someone meets you and they say, I'm so glad I met you because you gave me this and focus on that to start. It does not mean you can't solve the other problems and you won't work on the other problems, but it makes it very clear when you're talking to somebody that they go, great, I know I need you right away. Does that make mm -hmm, sense? Mm -hmm. It does, it does. So problem is, is question number one. And number two, yeah. it would be- so question, so question number two is who has this problem? So now that you know what the problem right. is, you have to be able to clearly identify a person that has this problem. And so for some of you out there who haven't done this, I want you to imagine either a previous customer that you've worked with or someone you're working with right now, or if you haven't worked with anyone yet, I want you to make up a name. I want you to make up a person, like flip through a magazine and find a picture of a person and go, this is going to be my person. I'm going to name this person, Bob. And I know that Bob has this problem. And I really I do want you to. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say it sounds crazy for a lot of people, <laughs> but that's what you do because when you market, you market to one specific person. That's what right. you're trying to say. It's not just a hypothetical example. He really means that, guys. Yeah, so cut it go out. Ahead. Yeah, <laughs> cut it out. Yeah, and, and, and you want to think about the problems that they're having in their life. You want to be able to say that, you know, Bob, you know, when, if he doesn't find the customers that he needs for his business, if he can't get his marketing off the ground, if he's not successfully going to events or running campaigns online or doing the things that he's doing, he's got many more problems. He's not, he's not flexible. He's not able to spend time with his family. He has to stay in a job he doesn't like. So notice that I'm not focused on all the things I'm going to do for him because yes, marketing is the solution and what I'm going to teach or what I'm going to train you on, that is the solution. But I'm thinking a lot more about what he thinking than what I'm thinking about him. I'm saying, what does Bob care about? What are his priorities? What is he doing with his time? Is he, you know, panicked? Is he, you know, just mildly concerned? Is it something that he thinks about every day, every hour, every minute? You really want to get into the head of your customer and really be very specific and very clear. And for some of you who really struggle with this exercise, or you say, I serve everybody, or you work with lots of people, this type of exercise where you force yourself to look at a cut out of a person and say, this, I'm gonna pretend this is my customer, will help you narrow that down to just saying like, look, mm -hmm. And if you can't come up with that example, if you sit around and you think about your problem and you just go, you know what? I can't think of one person that has that problem. You really want to step back and reevaluate and say, it has to be a problem that someone has. You have to have met someone that has said to you at some time or another, I really have this problem. And I really wish I had some help or I had your product or I had your service or I had something. You want to clearly identify who the person is that has this problem. And again, keep it simple. You might say, I want to have nine people that have this problem. But at first, start with one. Who has this problem? And do you know who they are? And in your mind, do they have a name or do they have names of the people that you think about for what they're doing? And then one other, one other thing I would add to that is, as you're thinking about how they relate to the problem, ask yourself, do they talk about this problem out loud or do they keep this problem to themselves? Is it something that they would share with people or is it something that they keep to themselves? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And this is, this is an aha moment for me right there. <laughs> 
Yeah, do they talk out loud or do they keep it to the, because that will depend on how you market to them. Is Correct. it going to be a pri more private or, yeah. Okay, right. well, let's move and, on. Yeah. And, and a good example of that will take us into this third question, because I've worked with people in many different spaces and a lot of people who work with adults and they work on things like dating coaching or sex coaching or things like that, where they aren't necessarily things that people are going to talk about a lot. And so your marketing approach or how you start talking to people has to keep that in mind. And so that takes us to the third question. So we asked, what problem do you solve? We asked, who has this problem? And now the third question is saying, what does the person experience once the problem's gone, once it's done, once it's solved? What do they experience? And I don't want you to say what they do or what, you know, the specifics of they did this. I want you to focus on what happens for their life. What are the, the, the repercussions once this problem is gone? So in the example of losing 10 pounds, when you lose 10 pounds, it's not just about losing the 10 pounds. When you've lost 10 pounds, you'll sleep better. When you've lost 10 pounds, you'll be more attractive to the opposite sex. When you've lost 10 pounds, you'll be more focused on your life, on your work, on the things you really care about. You'll be able to do things that you haven't been able to do up to this point. Because of that, when you lose 10 pounds, you get to the point where you're, making, you're, you're focused and it's easier to make better choices. So if you want to lose more than that, it'll be easier to lose more than that. And notice how in that I never said anything specific. I never said, you're going to go to a gym, you're going to go on a diet, you're going to do any of these things. I focused entirely around the experience of what they really want. So for me, for example, I'm somebody that really wanted to lose a lot of weight. And over the years, I was up over 300 pounds at one point and lost 100 pounds to get down to where I was. And I can tell you the reason, I, people had asked me for years, they'd say, well, didn't you want to be healthier? Didn't you want this and that? And I knew for me, had somebody marketed to me from the very beginning and said, be more attractive to the opposite sex or be more attractive to, to people. That's what I wanted yeah. to be. And for me, in addition, I cared about my image because I was a speaker and a trainer. And I just felt uh -huh. like it was out of alignment to talk about those things. And so I cared about that experience. If somebody told me all the things I was going to do or how I was going to do it or what they were going to do for me, I probably wouldn't have cared about it as much. And plenty of people did over the years. What I cared about is what comes after. And so you have to be able to answer that question of saying, what does your person experience once the problem is solved? What changes in their life? And that takes uh -huh. us to the fourth question, which is related to this, which is saying, all right, so now that you've thought a little bit about what they experience, now you got to ask yourself, what happens if they do nothing? So what happens if the person does absolutely nothing? They don't work with you. They don't click your ad. They don't look at what you're doing. They don't have the conversation. They just let things go and they never deal with this problem or it just sits. What happens then? Uh -huh. What are the consequences if they don't take action? And you want to be very clear on that as well. So you want to have a clear outcome of what happens if they don't change or they don't fix things, if uh -huh. they just sit. Because again, the question you have to be able to answer in all of this is to say, is it worse for them to stand pat where they are right now? Or is it worse for them you know, to go through the process and to actually make it better? For a lot of people in their mind, if they think that you know, it's a little bit less bad for them to just keep doing what they're doing or not work with you or not do any of anything like that, they probably are not gonna be willing to take action. They'll go, it'd be nice to have that. It'd be nice to lose those 10 pounds, but they don't see the consequences of what happens if you sit still. So in the weight loss example we're using again, if you sit still, you have huge health problems. You don't sleep well. You have risks like diabetes and higher risk of heart disease and cancer and things like that. All sorts of health issues that come with it. You're not as attractive. It makes you withdraw socially from people. Like if you keep going this way, you need to be able to clearly communicate a consequence for if they don't take action, if they uh -huh. don't work with you. So what happens if they do nothing is the fourth question. And then there's only one more, as I said, this is pretty simple. And that leads us to, and this is kind of a natural progression. Why did I got to do something right now? Why is now the time? Why can't it be next week? Why can't it be 30 days from now? Why can't it be a year from now that they do something? Because everybody is going to, you know, people in general, if they're not immediately focused on it, and especially when you're marketing somebody, they're probably not, they're probably thinking about it going, eh, well, 
it'd be nice if I did something like that. But there needs to be some urgency around it of saying, yeah. why is now the time? Is there something going on like a special screaming deal or a way that they, they would never have access to again or a time that is going to mean something completely different if they do it now versus if they do it a month from now or a year from now or something like that. So you need to be able to clearly communicate why now? Why is now important? Why does now matter? Because those motivators will really help paint a complete picture. So I want to revisit those five questions quickly again, plain English, simple. And I want those of you who've been in business a long time, even if you do this all the time, like me, and you're going, well, I want to tie this into my Facebook ads, or I want to tie this into my funnel, you still need to be able to answer these five questions every single step of the way. What problem do you solve? Who has this problem? What does that person feel like or experience when the problem's gone? What happens if they do nothing? And then what, why do they got to do it now? Why do they have to do it now? Those five questions alone can transform marketing campaigns. They really can. They can transform your conversations. If you know what the answers are, they help you see what people would naturally object to. It helps you see why people need to work with you or why people need to value what you're doing right now and how you're doing it right now. And it kind of simplifies the process because then when you put technology on top of it or you put other things on top of it, yeah. you're doing it knowing who the person is that's sitting on the other end, knowing the person and knowing what they want and knowing what they care about. Does that make sense? It does make a lot of sense. And I hope uh, all our viewers, they get a lot of breakthroughs right now because I think the, the most important thing for me uh, out of this conversation is that if you guys can get the idea that marketing is literally, you just can't just give you the secret word. It's a conversation. Marketing <laughs> is really, it's a yep. conversation. It's not selling. So don't be afraid of marketing and the word, the actual word and what goes beyond that. Of course, there are steps and, and Ken, Ken is a specialist. He's going to tell you how to get into his world yeah. so that you can... Uh, we'll jump into that right now, but really it's a conversation and just just shift your thinking and I hope you already did by the time and you can see like Ken you are unstoppable you're on fire <laughs> every every single time I listen to you whether that's on stage with 700 people in the room 300 people in the room behind the screen he is like this is Ken like this is the real deal and he's amazing so yeah I, I hope you already know that so it, the purpose if we this is my my uh, my thinking behind our conversation today we, we're we're sure. coming to the end and um, if that's if if we just uh, created the shift in the mindset, that's the beginning. That that's right. like the the goal came true, the dream came true. And then we're gonna I'll, I'll give you a little bit of the heads up. We're gonna yeah. create a series of conversations, of conversations about marketing and how to create funnels and all that and what goes into that. Because Ken has been doing it for for years already and for multi-millionaire and yeah. companies and and I know some of those people. So it's he's a he's a real deal and he knows. What he's <laughs> Thank you. Kind of, the scene. It's not like I'm bragging about you. It's just you can brag about me all you want. Oh, uh, yeah. Marketing. So, how can, before we get into, well, first, uh, let's uh, give our listeners the chance to uh, get into your community. Sure. Marketers. So, Exactly. So I have, a, I have a community that's called Your Momentum Now. It's totally free to get in. So of course, that's the, the special bonus offer. You don't even have to wait for the end for me to say, hey, how do I get in? It's totally free community. Yeah. And, and what we do is we talk about how to grow businesses. We talk about marketing. We talk about sales. And in particular, for those of you that want to speak and you want to become experts in your field, in your space, that's something that I really specialize in. And the cool thing about this community is imagine it like a virtual stage where we give space for speakers and experts who are masters in their field. Like I've been doing what I've been doing for a long time, but I know masters in fields like book publishing, 
publicity, personal development, all sorts of different areas. And so the community comes together to talk about the different issues in each one of those industries and how to market and sell in those industries. And we're talking about everything from if you've never marketed or more advanced. And I know in our subsequent conversations, we'll speak a little bit more to that for those of you who want a little bit more of, all right, I'm ready to start paying, you know, paying for some advertising, or I'm ready to make some systems choices, or I'm ready to, you know, build my website and want to look into some things or adjust what I'm doing right now. We'll talk more about that. But that's what we talk about every day at Your Momentum Now with people who are really in the field. It's not just me. It's a community of over 20 different experts. And it's growing all the time with what we offer to our members. And so I highly advise you to check it out. And for those of you who liked this topic that we talked about, the five questions you must ask before you start marketing, there's actually an extended presentation that goes over an hour um, that does a lot more of what you talked about, gives more examples, digs deeper into the questions, talks more thought, or I wanna know more about it, or I'm struggling with the answer to it a little bit. That comes as part of your free community membership. So when you sign up, you get access to that training and many, many other trainings that can get you started regardless of what level that you're at. And again, it's, it's the right price, it's totally free. And so again, that link for those of you in this community who wanna check it out and wanna get registered and get that bonus, which is the five questions webinar we're talking about, you just sign up at exploremomentum.com slash Jana. And we'll have that in the comments and the links and wherever you're hearing this replay, that link will be right there for you to check it out and see what we're all about. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So it's up for you guys, yeah, just we jump right in. And uh, well, it's a, it's become it's become a tradition, Ken. To um, I'm asking all my guests on the show uh, this one question: What is sure. this one jam? You 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 dropped like golden nuggets uh, today <laughs> along the way. But what is this one jam that you can leave out of your treasure box? that uh -huh. you can leave all our viewers uh, with. And that could be not necessarily limited to the topic of the presentation, although sure. if you want to, but from your experience as a business owner, as, a, as an individual, as a soul. So what's sure. the gem? You know, don't go it alone. And I know that that's probably so cliche these days and you, you can see a million messages about it on Facebook, but you never really know what it's like to go it alone until you find yourself in a situation where you're going it alone and where you're challenged and you're up against things that you don't know or you don't understand. And I'm a person in personally that I like to figure things out. I like to solve puzzles. I want to work on things. And in the business world, that can, that can truly destroy a business. If you're trying to go it alone, if you're not working with experts, if you don't have a community or many communities, I have many communities that I work with and partner with, including yours, that I make sure that I'm staying in touch with people. So don't go it alone. You don't have to figure this stuff out on your own. The things that seem like rocket science to you now, you know, 10 years from now will seem boring in comparison because you'll have done them so much and you'll have worked in those areas so much. So all that matters is that you're constantly surrounded by people that are in your life that are cheering you on, that are supporting you, that are challenging you, moving you to the next level. And if you don't have that, the good news is you're part of this community with Jana. You, the Your Momentum Now community is another option for you. And if you need more, there are many, many more that exist that I'm sure either of us could share with you that you should learn about. But don't try to do this alone. Don't try to go with just your idea. It will put you in a place that makes it much harder than it needs to be. So thank you so much, Ken. So that was the amazing Ken course on Dream Big with Jana, inspiring you to reignite, refire, and refuel your life. And we're going to see you soon. You will. Thank, thank you. you. Ken. Yes, yes. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, Ken. Thank Bye. you. Bye.